there in any simulated or actual instrument or through our instructor, you quickly develop an appreciation for the attitude indicator. It's the quickest and easiest way to interpret exactly what your pitch and bank attitude is during instrument maneuvers. And we get spoiled with the G1000 display in the AHARs, but it's also important to understand how the standby, the vacuum driven attitude indicator works. Especially if you want to uh, get your instrument rating, or if you want to fly anything with like a traditional six pack cockpit light out. So if you take a look inside the 172 POH we have here, it's a very simple vacuum system really. Power is supplied by our engine driven vacuum pump. We have a regulator controlling suction, We've got the attitude indicator itself, transducer for the engine indicating system, and an air filter. If you're really curious, take a look under the instrument panel on your next pre-flight. You can actually see the regulator between the firewall and the standby attitude indicator. And you can see the filter all along the pilot side underneath the instrument panel with all the tubing. So yeah, check it out. It's not easy, you may have to do a bit of stretching beforehand, but it is definitely visible. So this one, this particular attitude indicator came from a Piper, it actually says Piper aircraft up there. Um, but it functions exactly the way the attitude indicator we have does. So, if you look at the back of our instrument case here, we have three openings. We have an inlet, outlet, and gauge in the 172S, and in fact, this one as well. Air would be drawn through the air filter first, then into the inlet, inlet tube there, where it would spin the gyro, then be sucked out the outlet by suction from the vacuum pump, then uh, the gauge would be connected to the vacuum transducer. All right, so to open the instrument up, just have to remove three screws in the back here, it comes apart. And you'll notice as I do that, there's actually a little rubber ring around here. Of course, the instrument is sealed and it's airtight. So, put this down for now. So, as you recall from your readings of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge or the wealth of knowledge of your instructor, these instruments work using the principle called rigidity in space. Basically, during flight, the gyro is going to stay perfectly horizontal and the airplane is actually going to pivot, pitching and rolling around the gyro. It looks pretty complicated if you look inside, but there are actually only a couple main components we're looking at here. So, the actual housing of the gyro is this unit right here, and you actually see there's a window, little, not sure if it's brass, but the little uh, brass colored gyro is inside there. It's where it spins at a very, very high speed, protected of course from all the outside stuff going on. So, we also have the gimbals for roll here, you can see roll, roll is actually unlimited in this gyro, so I can spin it all the way out, around through 360 degrees. However, pitch is limited, you see we have a couple couple stops here, one right there, and one on the other side right there. So those are going to contact the housing, or the, the gimbal right there, when it reaches its pitch limitation. So that's an example of when you hear somebody say a gyro tumbles, when it hits the, the stops basically, it's going to precess quickly and no longer read accurately. So, <clears throat> uh, we've got a couple mechanical linkages we can look at as well. You see on this side, we have a linkage that controls the pivot of the, this, the horizon plate on the face there. So as it tilt the gyro, that moves back and forth. In reality, in the airplane, the gyro would be level, and you know, the aircraft itself would be pitching around the gyro, staying horizontal. And you can see how that moves the, the uh, plate on the face of the instrument there. And actually, the roll as well. So you can see the roll moves, where in fact the gyro would be staying perfectly horizontal, in theory. So. Let's take a look at how the air flows in this gyro, right? It comes in through the inlet there, right there. It will flow through, flow through the housing, through the gimbal, through here, into here, and then go spin the gyro, and then it's, it's exhausted on the bottom side of the gyro here. Uh, and we have what they call pendulous veins we're looking at. So, if we look here, very small holes on each of the four sides of the bottom of the housing here. So there's one there, there's one there, there's one here, Oops, there's one there, and one on the front side as well. So we get four, four of these pendulous veins, and normally, if the uh, gyro is perfectly horizontal, they'll all hang out right about in the middle there, and it'll exhaust the same amount of air from all four of them. So it's, you know, all forces are balanced here. If the gyro is, you know, upset from its perfectly horizontal rotational plane, gravity is going to cause these pendulous veins to swing and open, you know, deflect to one side. You can see as I deflect it, this uh, hole is now fully open and this hole is now fully closed on the other side. What that does is it gives us a precession force, if you recall, recall precession from the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge, 
When you have a rotating gyro, if you apply force to it, that force is felt 90 degrees later in the rotation. So for example, if there's a, uh, you know, if it's uh, upset along this axis, this one's gonna open, apply a precessing force this way, and basically set it back to the horizontal plane. So that's what they call in the design process the erecting mechanism that sets the gyro up horizontal. So when you check the attitude indicator at the beginning of your flight, basically that's how you know it's level. And it also helps out if the gyro, you know, due to friction or some sort of acceleration error, that'll also help get it back to the horizontal plane if it's upset. This can also bring with it a couple errors though, for example, in uh, steep turns or anytime you get uh, centrifugal force that, you know, acts to tilt it out of its horizontal plane, uh, you get a small pitch and bank error um, as well. That's a written test question for the instrument pilot, so you should remember that. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, exhausted from our little uh, ports there at the bottom. Goes to the instrument case itself, which as we know is uh, vacuum sealed with our little o-ring, and then gets exhausted to the outlet, where it goes to the vacuum pump, and then out uh, overboard expelled. So that's basically the, uh, the inner workings of our attitude indicator here.